Hello and welcome back. I'm Natalie MacDonald and you're watching Dukascopy TV. Here to talk today about growing small and medium-sized companies, I've got Dan Zwerski in the studio. Dan, thank you very much for popping in and chatting with us. Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. No problem at all. You're very welcome. Okay, so Dan, what are some of the challenges still facing small and mid-sized companies? Well, I think there are several and I'm going to try off the first thing with what's really kind of obvious, but let's look at the the cash flow crisis and the economy crisis that's going on currently. And while it's an obvious problem, the issue that we have here is that you have companies that are small and medium that need cash. That's really critical for them. And they need to go and get those uh, buyers uh, out in the European market to buy their products and services. Well, the economy is still a little bit sluggish even though it's moving along. So that still becomes a problem. That's quite obvious. Um, a little bit more into that, what is not so obvious is how do you get to those markets? Um, right now, because there is the European Union on paper, we all know that uh, there's still an ever going uh, kind of evolution of trying to get the European Union together. And what that does is that creates different fractured markets. So you have different cultures, you have different countries. And so the small and medium business owner and the entrepreneur need to understand all these different types of markets and they and it finds it quite difficult to do that so what i'd like to try to suggest to people is you take a look at not only the small market here in europe but one of the things you need to look at in the beginning is how am i going to market my product my service to an outside market for example the united states or to china where there is a little bit more of a of a, a unified culture and a unified market that can then help you when you start off in Europe to maybe pick a certain area and then go from there. Um, the second thing related to that is the regulatory environment. So the regulations are different from different countries. And so again, these same people need to take a look at how are they going to get this regulation fulfilled, that regulation, they have to be an expert. And of course, if you're a small business owner and if you're an entrepreneur, that's a lot to do. That's a lot to think about. So that is one of the challenges that you have. Now, moving into other things, I think that although there's great progress being made, there's still a need for better uh, entrepreneurial spirit and support of the entrepreneurs and that competitiveness you know, spirit within the EU. Um, and there's a lot of initiatives going on to improve that, but I think you, know, you look at uh, cash as being an example, but really when you're looking at the spirit and the, you know, the support from governments, from banking, from all these different entities to help bring upon that, you know, that can do and that entrepreneurial spirit. I think that's one of the challenges that you face, but it's also moving forward. So if we take Mario Draghi's ECB now and they are encouraging banks to lend to small businesses, how does this change the playing field in terms of growing European business? Okay. Well, um, I like the word encouraging that you use. Uh, the way that you might look about it is, I don't think, this is the bottom line, I don't think that it is necessarily going to change the playing field that much. Because encouraging, what the ECB is really trying to do, what everybody needs to remember, is they're trying to promote money into the system to combat deflation. So the small and medium business owner is almost, they're almost a little bit secondary. And so when you say encouraging, uh, they're also penalizing the banks for not lending. If they want to park money into the ECB, then they're gonna get penalized for that. So I think what that does is that creates much more of an adversarial environment between the ECB and the European banks, and not so much of a cooperative environment, which can then, they can work together and say, okay, what's gonna be good for the banks? What's gonna be good for everyone if we can get that money into the small and medium uh, uh, enterprise businesses and the entrepreneurs. Um, so I think that, you know, I, I don't necessarily think that's going to be a huge success in itself, but I want to be positive about it. Um, looking at other initiatives, though, that I can look at that can say, okay, what has worked and what needs to work? I think a great example right now is the uh, COSME, which is an, it's a program developed by the European Union that's going to kind of influx their own funding. So a lot of people don't know about that, but what that does is that starting 2014 this year through 2020, they've set up an estimated budget of about 2.5 billion euros to help 
entrepreneurs and to help small and medium business owners to get that money into that. But what's more important, I mean, we can get the money there, but what I feel what's almost as important or just as is the fact that they're going to also do other things like, you know, try to support the competitiveness to create that entrepreneurial spirit, to have other people come in and support the actions of small and medium business owners. Um, the environment, the, the, that sort of thing is really what's going to help in addition to that influx of cash. So that's a long-winded question, or a long-winded answer rather to your question. But I feel that in and itself, the ECU measure is not, uh, ECB measure is not necessarily going to have a huge impact overall. Now, Dan, I know you are very involved in AIC, who we have come into the studio regularly. Mm -hmm. How does this organization support growing businesses? Well, um, the AIC does it in, in many different ways. I mean, of course, not only are we a, a business and of course the social aspect of the AIC, but when we look at the business side of AIC, the very first thing that comes to mind is our professional development programs. And that is a specific program that we have to help the, um, not only the small and the, and the, uh, the, the medium-sized business owners and managers, but also seasoned ones. So what we do is we have regular programs and um, workshops on, for example, networking, how to network more effectively, um, how to communicate better, uh, more effectively as well, um, you know, how, to, how to improve your branding, uh, and different things that are going to be very specific to that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is our membership base. Okay, our membership base is made up of um, both active and retired uh, professionals here in the Geneva area. And these are people that want to be part of the club and they are part of that welcoming environment and they want to help. So they want to be mentors, they want to give out information. They want to help people such as the entrepreneurs who are maybe a little bit younger in order to get them, you know, gain that knowledge, share the knowledge that they have. And so you have the people that are willing to do that within the club. And those are the types of people that you would meet in the AIC. Um, finally, to kind of just add on to that a little bit is it's the whole environment of the club of AIC. You know, we have a, a very positive environment in the club. We have people who are optimistic, who are energetic, who want to see people succeed. They want to build friendships. They want to have that good, solid foundation in the Geneva community. And those are the types of things when you're an entrepreneur and you're a small business owner, there are a lot of times it's not, an easy, it's not an easy job to take on. There are times when you need the mental support. And I think that the AIC can do that. So not only from a financial standpoint in terms of how do you do things to help yourself financially to get better and to grow, but also from a mental perspective of putting yourself around good people, positive people that can help you grow your business and grow your mind at the same time. Dan, thank you so much for coming in and chatting with us. A pleasure speaking with you. Well, it was a pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. That's all we've got time for right now, but do stay tuned to Ducoscopy TV for plenty more exclusive interviews with market leaders. Goodbye for now.